For this week's clinical file, we have Kamani, and Kamani is creating an at-home stretching routine for a three-month-old child with right congenital muscular torticollis. Which of the following is the most effective? So we have A, laying the child on the left side over a ball. B, laying the child on the right side over a ball. C is lay the child prone with the head rotated to the right. And then D is lay the child prone with the head rotated to the left. All right, so this is congenital muscular torticollis. Um, this is a, definitely a common concept that comes up. Uh, you see it all the time, all the time in pediatrics in your first six months of practice. Very common, right? Uh, so we want to make sure that we understand this well and know how to treat it and all that good stuff for the MPTE. Let's go ahead and break down this question. It says Kumani is treating uh, or is, is treating, oh my gosh, is creating an at-home stretching routine for a three-month-old child with right congenital muscular torticollis. And I want to break down that sentence because there's a, there's a lot there, all right? So we're creating an at-home stretching routine. I think it's important for us to keep in mind that we are, we're, we're trying to stretch this patient, right? We're trying to create something to stretch the patient. So we want to keep that in mind as we start to look at the answer choices because we want the answer choice to match that, right? Okay. So creating a, a home stretching routine for a three-month-old child with right congenital muscular torticollis, or CMT, they sometimes have it as. So I think that this is important for us to slow up and really understand what a muscular torticollis really is. Um, so when we're talking about muscular torticollis, the first muscle that should pop into your mind is sternocleidomastoid, right? Sternocleidomastoid. And what creates this muscular torticollis is when your sternocleidomastoid becomes tight, okay? Now, here's the thing. When you have a sternocleidomastoid on the right, you have a sternocleidomastoid on the left, cool? So here's the question for you before we move any further. What is the function of that muscle, the SEM? What's the function? What does it do? And you should say the right sternocleidomastoid is going to side bend the head to the right. It's going to rotate the head to the left. So it does ipsilateral side bend, contralateral rotation. That's the role of the sternocleidomastoid. Cool? So we're all set there. That's the basics. Now, when we see right congenital mus muscular torticollis, what is that? Well, it's when the right sternocleidomastoid is tight. So our patient is going to present with right side bend and left rotation. So that's exactly how this patient's presenting to us right now is right side bend, left rotation. So the question says, which of the following is the most effective? For those of you on the podcast, let me go through those answer choices again. So we have A, laying the child on the left side over a ball. B is laying the child on the right side over a ball. C is lay the child prone with the head rotated to the right. And then D is lay the child prone with the head rotated to the left. All right, so let's break these down one by one. Laying the child on the left side over a ball. And so for those of you that are in the gym right now, you could take yourself over to one of the benches or maybe you, if, there, if there's a Thera ball in the gym, you would wanna do this for yourself to just see how it feels. See how it feels. So if we were to lay the child um, on their left side over a ball, what would that do? What would that do? So one thing, if you lay over a ball, you're going to notice that you're going to activate your muscles on the right side of your neck, right? You're going to activate potentially some of that scalenes going on. You're going to activate your, your sternocleidomastoid as well because the head is going to want to what we call write. The head is going to want to do a writing reaction or try to come back the other direction and it's somewhat for comfort. It's somewhat because there's getting a little stretch going on. And so it activates the muscle. So if I lay a child on their left side over a ball, we're actually going to activate that sternocleidomastoid. Is that what we want to do? Do we want to activate this muscle or do we want to stretch it out? Because remember, 
Kumani, the, th- the physical therapist in this question, is creating an at-home stretching routine. So my question to you is, do I want to stretch this muscle or do I want to strengthen it? You should be saying stretch it, right? So here's the thing. If you lay a child on their left side over a ball, it's going to activate that right sternocleidomastoid. And if anything, we're working more on endurance or strengthening of the muscle, not stretching it. I know it seems like it would stretch it, but actually it's going to cause the muscle to activate and then be counterproductive for what you're trying to do because the person's going to go into even more right side bend. We don't want that. All right. So A doesn't make sense. B says laying the child on the right side over a ball. And so now I'm kind of like, all right, I see it a little bit. So if we lay the child on the right side, then we're going to activate the left SCM. And okay, so I I see how that could work. And then we're pulling the head out of the position of the right side bend. I get that. The only problem is in the question, it says Kumani is creating an at-home stretching routine. It doesn't say Kumani is creating an at-home strengthening routine. And so if I lay a child on the right side over a ball, it's not going to stretch the right SCM. It's not. If anything, it's going to activate the left SCM and be more of a endurance or strengthening exercise for the left SCM. Is that what I wanted this question? Absolutely not. I'm putting a nice X next to B. Let's keep moving. We got C next. Lay the child prone with the head rotated to the right. And you might want to do this as well. It's the easiest way to really understand this. Let's say we give the child what they call tummy time. We put them on their tummy, right? And we position them where their head is rotated to the right. Is that going to stretch the right SCM? Think about it. If I lay the child prone with the head rotated to the right, will it stretch the right SCM? You should be saying, yeah. Because if we come back to the original like position, of the patient. Remember, it's right congenital muscular torticollis. The patient's in right side bend, left rotation. So if I position them in prone with right rotation, ooh, now I get a nice little stretch action going on. I like this. It makes sense. Here's the other reason why I like C. I like it because what is a great way to stretch a very tight tissue? Come on, let's go back to the principle. Let's go back to when we are learning exercise principles in PT school. If we wanted to stretch a really tight tissue, what's one of the major ways that we do it? One of the major principles. And you should say, well, low, low, long duration is one of the most effective ways to stretch tight tissue, right? Well, placing the child in prone, giving them that low load stretch, make sure their head's rotated to the right. It makes sense. All right, I like it. Doesn't mean it's the best. Let's look at D. D says, lay the child prone with the head rotated to the left. So I like the tummy time. I like laying them down and prone. But the only thing is, if I rotate the head to the left, that's not stretching anything. Remember, that right SEM is already rotating them to the left. So why would I want to position them to the left? It's not going to stretch anything at all. So it's actually opposite of what I would want. So I'm going to go ahead and X out D as in dog, leaving us with our best answer of C, which is lay the child prone with the head rotated to the right. I cannot explain this or stress this or emphasize this to you enough. You have to understand muscular torticollis. I've seen so many questions come up where they word it a little different and then you get mixed up. Has that happened to you? It happened to me so freaking much. I can't tell you how many exams that I've taken where it's kind of like they switch a word in there and I'm kind of like, wait, right congenital muscular, wait, is the head to the right or is the head to the left? Has anybody had that happen to you before? Because if it has, listen, you're not alone. And the way to fix that, to keep that from happening in the future, is to make sure that you get more practice with torticollis. 
that you make sure you know exactly what the sternocleidomastoid does, that you kind of mix it up on yourself a little bit, look at it backwards and forwards and in all these different ways. That way, when the MPTE throws a curveball, you're ready to bat that puppy down. All right. Congenital muscular torticollis is a major area that comes up. Like I said, it's definitely beneficial to know it. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. Again, the answer was C, lay the child prone with the head rotated to the freaking right. All right. For those of you on the podcast right now, I never want to leave you just with that basic understanding. Uh, go into the show notes, click the link in there. I got a cheat sheet that's going to go over congenital muscular torticollis. Those major things that you need to know to review for the exam.